This is the Pet Central Podcast. Let's make some profits. Good day and welcome to the Numbers Game Podcast brought to you by Betcoza and Laduma Analytics. My name is Lee and I'm here with Alex. Together every week we do a deep dive. We get our hands dirty with the data related to the PSL, the players, the teams and so forth. Alex, how are you doing today? Hi, good morning, Lee. All good, my side. How are you? I am great, thanks. Lots and lots to talk about, but the focus this week is going to be on Kaiser Chiefs and the signings that they have made on the field and on the bench, I guess. That's where the coach is. So <laughs> there's a lot to get into. We wanted to cover many teams, but then because Chiefs signed like five, six players in one go, they got a new coach as well in the last week. We thought, you know what? Let's just do Kaiser Chiefs alone. And I hope that's enough for you, listener. Um, what are your thoughts, Alex? Firstly, on the coach that happened last week. Yeah, Lee, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm a bit surprised. I think a lot of people were surprised. So I think everyone kind of, um, well, nobody saw this one coming, uh, like I would say, um, unless you were a punter taking a, a bet out in the wild, putting, putting some money down on this. You probably had good odds and you probably got a good return. But yeah, I don't think anybody saw this coming. Look, I mean, nothing against the coach, but it's a strange one for me. First off, what are your thoughts? I mean, I'm looking at it from a statistical point of view. He's going to get a chance to perform. He's going to get a chance to make his selections and get uh, to build his own record. But then from a statistical point of view, uh, firstly, it's yet another coaching change for Kaiser Chiefs. That is now six coaches in the last five years, we talked about that on the radio recently. And that means it's taken them six, like six seasons to get six coaches. Before then, it took them 15 seasons to go through six coaches. So that to me speaks about a lot of change happening in the club in the last half century or so. A bit of uncertainty maybe. Um, and as they are grappling with how to catch this runaway train that is Mamelodi Sundowns. Because one thing that's been consistent in the six seasons is that Sardinans has won the title on each and every one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I remember we were sitting here last year talking about this when they announced Arthur Tuane. And for me, it was interesting at the point because I was listening to a podcast that um, the the club had done. I can't remember who it was, was on a club, um, was on a podcast from the club talking about their kind of direction what they wanted to do with um with with uh, coach Twani at the time and which direction they were taking the signing they had done at the players and that was all interesting to see kind of and hear the background about the club and what their vision was i haven't seen a podcast about this announcement and where they want to go from here so i think it would be one would need to have that context to understand where they're going but yeah i guess we'll see and i mean look we wish them all the best i hope it works out for them but with the coaches um that have had the time they haven't had the time so we'll see where that goes and but they've announced six new players um now do you think these players would have been on the radar for the coach when he was coming in or are these players that are not going to match the coach who's coming in ah uh, yeah that's I, I guess that's the the context within which all of this is occurring is that there's a new coach last week and then a week later uh, six new players but again, most of these players, they've already been linked heavily with Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, we know that some of these photos, for example, were taken a week or two ago. So I think these are players that the coach knows about. These are players that he's had a hand in deciding whether they come in or not. And like I said, play players like um, Dudu Zim Danzane, these guys have been linked to Chiefs for the last three, four months. It's been kind of we're just waiting for the announcement to happen. So I don't see any new surprises in terms of him, uh, the new coach uh, making the signings. But I think it's something which the club overall had looked at and said, OK, these are the guys that we're going to get in the coming season. And we're going to look at these players. Actually, the gist of this podcast is looking at some of these new signings, especially the local ones, the ones where we have data. Uh, we're going to start at the top with Mdudu uh, Zimdanzane. Uh, player came from Cape Town City, very key part of the Cape Town City setup in the last three, four, maybe even five years. Um, and 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 he's now joined Kaiser Chiefs. Made over one hundred appearances for Cape Town City, 
Uh, less than 10 players have done that for the club. So he's been a mainstay there. We're talking about a player who has really made his mark at the Citizens. 21 goals again makes him the all-time top scorer there at the club. But what's interesting now is that last season was actually his least productive in terms of goals with just two. And also he only completed one game last season from beginning to the end. So it's an interesting, it's a good signing, but it's interesting timing in terms of is it too late? Is it past his peak? What do you think, Alex? Yeah, it's an interesting question you raised there, Lee. I mean, he's 28 years of age. He is turning 29 um, in about 100 days' time, so in December, um, so three months away. So it'll be about three months into the season. But at 28 years of age, I mean, he's at his peak. He's had a really good time at Cape Town City in a couple of seasons. Not last season, as you just mentioned, but I think it was the season before or maybe even the season before that. He uh, scored, I think, something like double figures uh, in that season. So he, he can be a very productive player. He is um, he is a player that can fit into that into this chief side and provide an attacking threat going forward. So it'll be interesting to see where he goes and how he plays and who he links up with. The one thing for me, I think, as you mentioned, um, he didn't have a very productive season last season. He's only play, only played just under eleven hundred minutes, which equals about forty percent of the league um, minutes available at Cape Town City for the season. So. He wasn't used much last season, so we'll see where that fits in this coming season for Chiefs. Indeed. So the context is, he's a player who wasn't played that much this season, but Kaiser Chiefs has decided he is crucial to their plans. The one thing also I want to add before we go too deep into the signings is, you've mentioned that he's a 28-year-old. 28 until turning 29, we know that. So he's still 28, but we're talking about a mature player here. In fact, the six signings that Kaiser Chiefs made this week, their average age is actually 28. So we're not talking about future planning here. We're not talking about uh, long-term renovations of the squad. We're talking about immediate changes that are expected from these players who are already in their peak age. And if you're telling me that you're bringing in a player who last season was in regular, only scored two goals, and you think he's going to have the most impact immediately, well... I look forward to seeing how that works out. It's going to be very interesting because we, based on the ages and the age profiles of these players and the, the, the graph we produced two weeks ago on squad ages, where we say that Kaiser Chiefs had about 13 players that play, were peak age players, 13, putting them third in the league for players between 25 and 29 that were playing for them. And now we're adding another bunch of those that speaks to me not as a long-term plan, but this is about immediate rewards coming fruit. Yes, indeed. These players will be coming in, expected to hit the ground running. And I mean, it's not something that has kind of worked at Chiefs all too much in the last while, if I remember correctly. Uh, so we'll be interested to see where that goes. Let's see. Let's see. Player number two. Up front, we have Ranga Chiva Viro, who came from Maromo Gardens. A bit of wrangling about a signature and pre-contract agreements and so forth in the press in the last week or two. But ultimately, it looks like that's a done deal. It's a signing that is confirmed. He comes into Kaiser Chiefs' front line directly to help with the goals. Do they need help with the goals? What do you think about this one, Alex? Well, they definitely need help with goals. The one thing Kaiser Chiefs were really good at last season was creating chances. So I yes. think this... it's it's. I'm I'm very curious to see how this one's going to work because Ranga's come in from a team that has got relegated. He has hit double figures last season. He's coming from a team that may not have created as much chances for him. And he's coming into a team that have created a lot of chances for the players up front. So I can see where it, it kind of mashes together and hopefully produces that perfect cake with all the ingredients in it. And we'll see if that works. Um, but for me, the looking if we have a shot map here of all his shots taken for Maruma Guns, and the, a lot of them are kind of right centrally in front of the box, which is a key area, and he's taken a couple of goals from this area as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how this works. I'm just curious to see, um, yeah, how this works. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I think what you're saying... Kaiser Chiefs' problem in the last few seasons has been 
they do create a lot of chances. They've been, I think last season they led the lead for XG when you look at that, chances created and the quality of those. But then they've lacked someone at the front to actually finish these chances. So this, to me, looks like a signing that is trying to solve that particular problem in that chances are being created, but they are not being finished at all. And should the chances continue being created, maybe uh, Ranga could be the guy that actually finishes them because he has a very, very, very strong record in terms of short accuracy, ranging in the 50%, making him in the top five in the league for short accuracy. This is a player who does not waste the chances that he is given. 3.92 shots per 90 minutes as well, puts him first in the league. So he is a player who's hungry, who's going to take shots at goal if he gets those chances created for him. So what I'm seeing here is should Chiefs continue that chance creation that they've been doing all along with uh, Keegan Dolly, Kamabili, should he come in? And even these new players, Yom Dansanes and from last season, Ashley Dupree, should they continue with that pipeline of shots creation? I think that could be a good thing that comes out for them because last season Chiefs scored 32 goals in 30 games. That is... That's a recipe for disaster, hey? That's just, you're just asking for trouble if you're going to be scoring one goal a game. So we're looking at trying to get Chiefs up from a one goal a game team to a two goal a game team, and then hopefully they could come closer to sundowns. I'm very not positive about the signing, like I'm a Chiefs fan, but I can see the sense behind this in that we need someone to finish these chances. Caleb has come in, he's failed to do that, or he hasn't done that to the expectation that the management had. But then he is a local striker who may be able to take these chances and solve that problem that Chiefs have had, I think, for the last three or four seasons since we started keeping this data, it's always been Chiefs creating chances, Chiefs creating chances. It's only when Simon Nukovic was there that he took those, but when he had injuries and so forth, the problem then started to uh, reiterate again and it has persisted ever since. Definitely. And one thing I think to point out, well, two things to point out is uh, from his shot map, I can't see any penalties. On there, so he's scoring goals and taking <laughs> shots. Ooh, that are are not from a penalty perspective. <laughs> I'm not taking digs anyway. I'm just kind of stating the facts that we're here. And the other, <laughs> and the other part is he he didn't play a lot of games last year. And in the but in the games that he did play, mm-hmm. he 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 scored mm-hmm. ten goals from the games that he did play. So give him give him Absolutely. more chances. Give him more time. Um, give him um. No, no disrespect to Rumor Gallants, but a better team with attacking threat to play in. This could be this could be a a, a work in progress for for Chiefs, and we'll see how it works um, throughout the twenty three twenty four season. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that. Let's move on to the next signing. There, uh, we're looking at Ule Modi, who's come in from Golden Arrows. We've looked at his radar in terms of wide player radars. We looked at some of the numbers here. And the one thing that stands out even before you get into the numbers is his versatility. A versatile player who's played all across that front line just behind the striker. As a left winger, you find him there a lot of the time. Sometimes he plays right attacking midfield. Sometimes he also plays left attacking midfield as well. So here's a player who's coming in here who has... Unlike, uh, let's say, Ranga Chivaviro, he is more of a versatile player who can play multiple positions. Nine goals and assists last season were second only to Knox Mutizwa at Golden Arrows. So a decent output in terms of goal contributions. And some of his numbers, they also are interesting. What do you think about Pule Modi joining the Glamour Boys? Yeah, so I like the signing a lot. Uh, he's been a very good player for Golden Arrows over the last number of seasons. The one thing to point out as well is this is a player who has played 97% of league matches for uh, mm-hmm. Golden Arrows last season. So mm-hmm. he's coming in with, with game time under his belt. He's coming in or uh, being a starter for Golden Arrows. So he'll be expected to come in and uh, and hit the ground running, just like any of the other signings. But I think he's a very good, interesting player on as you mentioned on the on the wing for for Chiefs and he'll bring that attacking threat going forward i mean if you look at his radar he's got he's very high among among other players in his position about passes forward passes into the penalty area uh, progressive runs so moving the ball forward into spaces seeing the space of 
of players in front of him to run into. He's also very um, has the ability to touch uh, the ball in the box a lot, dribble, success rate, uh, expected assists. So expected assists is measuring the uh, ability to pr- produce assists even if the attacking player that is receiving the ball does not score a goal. So I like this. I like the signing a lot. Absolutely. Um, also, I want to add there, in terms of his dribbling abilities, he's in the top 20 for the number of dribbles per 90, meaning he's quite adept at doing that. But then when you look at total dribbles only, he actually rises to the top three um, in terms of total dribbles. I think almost 120 dribbles successful last season. And that number drops when you look at dribbles per 90 because he played so many minutes, like you say, almost 98% of the season for Golden Arrows. But what we can foresee from these numbers is that these passing abilities combined with this dribbling capacity as well is going to be a key in terms of disrupting some of the deep defensive blocks that Chiefs have faced this past season. Chiefs, like we said, they kind of scored just 32 goals because they struggled to break down some of these teams that come in and defend against them. So you're looking at some of this dribbling, some of these forward passes to get in behind those defensive blocks. And Pule Modi, he may be the key to that. So another, I think, positive signing as well that could turn out to be a winner. Again, the one concern is that did he pick two years ago or three years ago? Should they have bought him earlier? Or will he come in here and revive his career? Let's see how that goes. Yes, definitely. I think, as you mentioned, yeah, he's uh, he is, again, 30 years old, just turned 30 in February of this year. So we'll see. Um, I'll be interested to see how he fits into the squad, where he plays, how often he plays, who he links up with, and what his attacking output will be for the season. Absolutely. And then, finally, we're going to the back. We're going to combine these two because um, their signing is actually... We have a left central defender and a right-sided central defender in uh, Given Simango and Tatayawone Di Kwe. And those are the last two signings that Chiefs have made domestically. There's still another player that came in from Venezuela, but we don't have his stats. We only have local stats here. So uh, Di Kwe is the youngest signing uh, of all these players here. We've said the average age 28. He brings that average down, actually. He would have been 29 or 30 if it wasn't for him. A 20-year-old defender who played the most minutes for Supersport last season than any other outfield player is joined by Given Simango, who also saw the most minutes in the league last term for his team. So, interesting young combination of players there. What do you think about the defensive signings that Kaiser Chiefs have made? So the defense for for Chiefs last season has well was a big issue. They conceded thirty three goals in the league last season when they only scored thirty two. So they were minus in goal difference. So it was vital for them to also up the attacking side, but also um, make some defensive signings. And De Clockwork was was already, if I'm not mistaken, pre signed in January. So that was yep. kind of already a, a done deal then. I think that was interesting and kind of gave maybe Chiefs fans some hope that the club were looking to the future and and kind of saw that issue and would like you looking to 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 solidify the defense. He's also an international for, for Botswana and he's played a lot of minutes last season. So he comes in with, with games under his belt. Um, who he will replace in the back line for, for, for Chiefs will be will be a key one. And I think many Many fans will be interested to see where he plays and who he partners with in defense. Maybe it's even the um, maybe it's even the other signing who you've just mentioned. What are your where, where do you see this working? It's 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 interesting here. It looks to me like these are we've looked at the minutes they played last season. We've looked at the fact that they are they were key parts of their team's defenses last season. Um, these are players that are not being signed to come in and sit on the bench, I don't think. I think these are players who are being signed to come in and immediately start because they are literally um, at the peak of their powers. Uh, If I'm not mistaken, one or two of them, if not both, were actually nominated for defender of the season or part of team of the season or something like that. Um, But then the question that arises is, are you going to have two brand new signings 
be your first choice defensive pair? Are you going to disrupt the whole back line and start all together with two new signings? Or is this going to be another season of getting a player to adapt to the team? Or are you continue with some of the guys that were there last season? That's what I look forward to seeing. Because from based on minutes played, based on the output that you've shared with some of the defensive numbers as well, these are players who are tops at their peak, elite defenders in the league who should start these games immediately. But are you going to risk that? Putting in two new players who don't understand or are yet to understand the team, the system, the culture, and so forth. Yeah, it, It's going to be interesting. I, I, I don't recall this happening ever at Kaiser Chiefs where two new signings come in and immediately become the defensive pair, not in a long time anyway, because we've had the likes of Matoho who've been around for a long time, uh, the likes of other defenders who've been here for a, a long time as well. So that is an interesting one. Alex, I think what I see rather, or oh, we've put a radar here and overlaid Msimango's numbers with uh, Titloko's numbers. And what we see is some bit of a difference. They're actually two different defenders beyond just being left-sided and right-sided. We see Msimango is a passer, passer defender, someone who is involved very much in the build-up. Top, 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 high in the league, elite numbers, 9.2 long passes per game, putting him in the top 10 for defenders in the league. Also high in terms of forward passes per game and actual passes per game. So he's more of a progressor of the ball, even making passes into the final third from the back. Whereas his uh, counterpart or his friend or his colleague, whatever you want to call that, is more of a stopper. Hey, he's more of a stopper, uh, high on defensive actions, sometimes high on crosses as well, but then not too adventurous and not too much of a passer. So we just want to make a note that, hey, these are two central defenders, both young and so forth, but they're actually very different. And maybe, just maybe, they may complement each other well. I think you've raised a, a few good points there. Uh, I think, yeah, the this off-season, the pre-season training, giving all these players together in a squad will give the new coach and the management team something to work with and understand. Do they want to change the system of play? Are they going to play different number of defenders at the back? Are they going to play four? Are they going to play three? How's it going to affect the system going forward in the middle? Those kind of things. So there's a lot of things to, to for them to consider in this offseason in the in the month before the, the league starts. And a profile like this, a radar, overlaying the defenders over each other, next to each other, and seeing how that works and seeing the characteristics and the abilities of these players really gives the coach a bit more of an insight and also the fans also to understand, okay, well, this is the player we've signed. This is the profile. This is what he's good at. This is maybe what he's not so good at. How does this fit into our team? Where do we see this working? It's all a lot of things for the management team to consider, but for the fans, it's also a very um, fun way of looking at numbers and understanding the context of these numbers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Alex, I think that brings us to the end of this. The last question I have for you is, do you think this is it for Kaiser Chiefs? Do you think there'll be more signings or are these enough? Are we done with signings for Kaiser Chiefs? At least two months left into the transfer window, or do you think there'll be more signings to come? Well, are these enough? That's a good question, Lee. Um, I will say it's enough for now, for this week. I mean, they'll, <laughs> they'll be working on, on more. They are, I think they'll definitely be working on more because um, what if some players leave? You want to build a squad that is competitive and you have cover in every area. And there might be some players that the coach wants to bring in that, that, that the club itself didn't identify. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they might see one or two more players come in. Where that will be, what profile that will be, that will be one we can only speculate at this moment in time. No doubt the media will still do rumors and um, transfer speculations, all this going forward. Um, and yeah, I guess we'll see. But I guess... Obviously, Chiefs will want to challenge for the title next year. Are these enough to challenge for the title next year? I like the defensive signings. I like uh, some of the attacking signings. The age profile for me is one that it's immediate now. But are they building to the future or is it just for now? And then we'll look again next season and evaluate from there. Absolutely. Look, listener, we will evaluate from there. In fact, stay tuned. Next week, we'll look at another club and other signings that have happened in the league. In the meantime, you can visit betcentral.co.za and read a profile of the signings that we've written and other content as well. Thank you for listening. 
Thank you for your time. Alex, see you again next week. Thank you, Lee. All the best. Cheers, man.